we have already completed two topics in our combinational circuit that were the multiplexers and the comparators now in this presentation we will study the introduction to the encoders and decoders they are also the combinational circuit and they fall under the m SI medium scale integrated circuit group and uh, after this we are having the LSI large scale integrated circuits if you remember the multiplexers were also the part of this MSI okay and uh, if I talk about the encoder then there are N inputs as you can see here and M output now there is a relation between this input N and the output M that we will see now before that let me tell you that the function of decoder is opposite to the encoder not very special what we are going to encode we have to decode it later on if you are sending a data the encoded data you can say from the senders and then you have to decode it at the receiver's end to get what actually the data was okay I hope you have already heard about this words encoders and decoders and have a small intuition about this so let's say if I am having an encoder this is our encoder and in this if I'm having four inputs okay this is let's say four cross I don't know what is the value of M because we have to find out the relation between N and M and this is our encoder okay let's say this is I0 I1 I2 and I3 they are the four inputs now very important thing that I'm going to tell you for these encoders is that it is used to minimize the number of data lines for example if I say out of this four input if a single input is high all the time okay either I0 is high I1 is high I2 is high or I3 is high but a single input will be high for each and every cases then what is the need to just use these four data lines if a single input is high you already know that if there are four inputs I can have two bits to represent them I0 can be represented as 00, zero. I1 is 0 1 1 0 and then 1 1 so instead of having four data lines I can have two data lines okay so the value of M will be 2 let's take one example if I say I2 is high then instead of send sending these four lines in which these three lines is not high and have no use I can send two lines in which the first bit will be 1 and the second bit will be 0 and at the receivers end it can be decoded again by using a 2 cross 4 decoder this question mark will be now 2 we have figured it out and uh, it is getting 1 0 and we know that 1 0 in binary if there is 1 0 it gives us what 2 so this is O2 output 2 2 in decimal so what we were having high as I2 and at this point we again got O2 and O2 and I2 are same so instead of sending the four data lines we send the two data lines that you can see here this is the core use of your encoders and decoders okay and uh, there are different types of decoders possible that we will see before that let me generalize this relation that we just found out if n is what 4 that was your input I can write n as 2 to the power 2 where m is 2 this is your m m is 2 so I can write n is equal to 2 to the power m this is the relation between the number of inputs and the number of output in your n coders and in case of decoders the relation will just change the n will become n and m will become n it's so let's take example in which I have made 8 cross 3 encoder and the decoder 3 cross 8 okay in this we are having 8 input and uh, because of 8 input the value of output will be 3 because we just figure out if n is equal to 8 which can be written as 2 to the power m the m will be equal to 3 fine and instead of sending 7 plus 1 8 data lines we will send only 3 data line this is the advantage of the encoder the data has been encoded let's say if i7 let's say here not i7 let's say if I 5 is high and 5 is what 1 0 1 in binary so this O 1 will equal to 1 this O 2 will equal to 0 and this O 3 will equal to 1 and this information will be decoded at this end and again O 5 will be high 
okay so this is the function of your encoders and decoders and it is very important there is one more important use of this encoders and decoder is the implementation of the given boolean expression if you are given the min terms you can easily implement it without using the different gates and the circuits involved that we saw in the multiplexer so it is a very convenient way for the implementation of the logic function the another important thing is the types there are four types of encoders that we have to see the first one is your priority encoder let's see what happened in this particular type of encoder if I say instead of only one input being high let's say two inputs are high i3 and i5 then what will be the output of the encoder it depends upon the priority that we set either we will set the low priority the bits with the lower order is much prior or we set the priority with the bits having the higher order or that we will see separately in the lecture when we discuss the priority encoder the second type of encoder is your decimal to BCD encoder the third type is your octal to binary encoder and the fourth and the last encoder that we have to see is your hexadecimal to binary encoder so this is all for this presentation a uh, small introduction about the encoders from the next presentation we will discuss the encoders and decoders in brief so see you in the next one